Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Games from Scratch. And earlier this week, Quixel released Bridge 2020 and they made it available completely free, which was awesome. But a lot of people were really saying, okay, well, where's Mixer? Where's Mixer? Where's Mixer? Well, Mixer is here. Mixer 2020 released today. And guess what? It is free also. And guess what else? It is also really awesome. So this one, a lot of people are looking at it going, okay, is this the competitor, the replacement for Substance Painter? Now the Substance Painter is owned by Adobe. A lot of people are looking for alternatives. So the wondering is, Quixel Mix, Quixel Mixer, is this the option? And the answer might be yes with this update. There's some really cool stuff here. But first, a quick overview of what Quixel Mixer is all about. And the idea is all in the name. It's about mixing together textures to make textures, really. It's it's that simple. And I'll show you what we mean in action. So here you got your base layer. We've got your elbow metalness, roughness, and so on. Come in here and just set this guy to a given color. So if we want to go like a slightly brown like that, and we're good. Also, we could come in here. We can define texture maps. We can have a starting pace, but everything has a base layer. And then what you start doing is layering things on top of that. So we could bring in a smart material right here, and this is going to come from our library. The cool thing is this guy ships, the free version ships with uh, something like 100 smart materials for you to get started with. Also, you can bring in your own textures, your own PBR textures to work with this. And then finally, and I got to warn you, this part isn't free. This is the Megascans integration. If you have an Unreal Engine, username or account and you're working with Unreal Engine, you can use this completely free. Otherwise, to get access to these 11,000 plus items, you are going to need uh, a subscription to Megascans. But again, if you're using Unreal Engine as your end result, all of that is available completely free as well. So let's say we're going to try and make, I don't know, a train here. I'm going to grab some lawn grass and we'll drop it into our hierarchy. All right, so it's loading that material in. So now we have lawn grass going on on top of our base layer. I'm gonna compare it to threshold and we'll just bring that grass up a little bit more. Okay, there we go. So we got some nice grass, got a little bit of the base layer showing through and we can just start layering things on like that as well. So we could put on top of our grass, uh, we could do a layer. Actually, no, we'll just stick with that one layer for now. So I'm gonna go on back over here uh, to my viewport, so we're looking at that. Now what I'm gonna do is do a layer of decal on top of that. So we got decals or decals. Here we go, desert dirt. I'm gonna throw some dirt on top of there. Um, see, it just scattered in around. You can control how many times it repeats, how much dirt kind of shows up across. You can also change the way it's projected. We could have it just kind of dump as one big piece of dirt, like poof. Um, and then you can move it around with offset. You can scale it around on the map like this. So you're basically placing your things in the world until you get it kind of the way you like it. And then you would say you had one more layer in here of, uh, I don't know what to use. Let's say, let's go to, let's filter by ground. See what we got in here. All right, so here we got some moss. Let's drop some moss into there. So we got the moss coming in. We'll crack its threshold up too. So we got some of the moss coming through, but we don't really want the moss to dominate things. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna set a mask on the moss. So we're gonna right click this guy and we'll do an add mask stack. And this is where the other part of it comes in. See over here, we've got various different options. So we can add, so if we wanted to apply this guy via a pattern, like a checkerboard pattern or whatever we could do so. I'm just gonna add a simple simplex noise on top of here. And there we're gonna see it comes through based off, we can do it off seating or whatever. And then that starts bleeding through on top. We could then start putting uh, decals on top, which basically literally get pasted on top of the layer, a uh, base color layer, uh, or we could add in some liquids here. So we'll add a liquid layer on top here. Once again, it is done by threshold. That will determine how high or low that kind of comes in. And then we come in here, we'll set the color of this guy. We'll make this a bluish looking liquid. Boom. So there we have created a texture, a compound texture from all of the various different pieces we worked with. And at the same time, if I decided I wanted to have something else in here, we could have integrated back over to um, here. So we got flowers. We got 525 flowers available to us over here that we could have brought in either as, uh, you know, atlases or decals or pastons or basically as full blown layers. So we've got a ton of different options we could bring in. You just click something, it'll go ahead and download it. Uh, but I'm going to stick with what we've got for now there is a very simple mix and, and that's kind of how things work you got control over the uh, environment mapping that goes on around here right now you'll notice that it's actually being blurred so you can have the background be a gradient you can have it be just flat color or a skybox I've got it all blurred out but this is giving us the environment lighting that we're seeing so you see here we've got different pre-configured skyboxes to work from for getting different kinds of lighting out of it and so on Again, I like to have that slightly blurred out so you can't really focus on the background layer. And you got control over your lighting, your light intensity, and so on right here. Um, and then 
Uh, yeah, this is just kind of your configurations for the performance, how you want things to run. And then when you are finally done, you basically just name this guy and send it all out. The nice thing is you can integrate this into Bridge and have your textures that you're creating here go into your Bridge for easy export out to your various different applications and programs. And you see here, you can you can export out the various different maps. By default, it's going to do the seven you started with. We could export out uh, a Medalmus map as well or we could add various different other maps to here and give them their own names, types, and channels, and so on. Or we can get rid of that guy. And then when you're ready, just go ahead and you can export out the seven maps. You've also got control over how they're named, uh, the file format that they're gonna be exported in, um, the resolution up to 8K that it's gonna be, re uh, that it'll be exported as. Very cool stuff. And in a nutshell, that is what Quixel Mixer is all about. You can drop through the individual channels that we've created here. So you see it's also creating a normal map as part of this process. It's creating specular maps and um, so on. So it's creating all the various different maps that you need just by bringing in all these already predefined materials and mixing them together. Um, but now we've got a completely new set of functionality from the 2020 release that is kind of a game changer for Quixel Mixer. So what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to start off with a new mix. Yeah, sure, fine. Nope, don't want to save that. All right, so here we are. So what we're going is back in here to set up. So, so far, I've just been using a plane. Uh, you could also have come in, have it use like a shader bell, like this guy, kind of a default uh, material for you just to start creating your, your guy on, uh, like so. Or we could have gone ahead and used uh, a 3D asset. This is kind of neat. You can actually grab stuff from uh, the online, uh, from uh, mega scans and actually bring in those 3D assets and work from them. So you get the material and the 3D model to go from, which is also really kind of cool. So if you're, if you're working from here, if you go in, there's the types, you can filter this down into surfaces and there's a bunch of predefined, actually it's not surfaces, it's 3D. You go down to there and they've got a bunch of 3D models fully textured and such that you can start from when working in Mixel as Mixer as well. But what is new in this particular release is we also have this option, which is actually you can bring in your own mesh. And we're gonna use the one that they provided in the 2020 examples. So that's in my downloads, it's called Wasp. We're gonna bring in the low resolution version right here. All right, so this is a typical game style model that you might wanna work with. Very straightforward. And they also ship the number of texture maps for this. Remember I said earlier on with your base layer, you could have defined all of these maps. Well, that's what we're gonna do next. So the Albedo channel, go ahead, we'll load that in. It's funny, even they call it, in their own program, they called it Albedo, but in their own map, they call it Diffuse, which I, I don't know why we can't just standardize on one damn word. All right, so roughness, come in here. There's a roughness map. Uh, there's a normal map. And we'll bring in the normal map. And then I believe there's an ambient occlusion map and we will bring that in as well. All right, so there you go. So we've got a fully textured uh, model for us to play with. As you can see, the performance is quite solid. I'm running this on a laptop under battery power, um, and it's it's fine. It, it I've never really had any performance issues. And here is, uh, just a kind of a model. This may be where you started from or this might be what you're ultimately working towards. Now where this got really different now is we have paint tools available to us and this, this is the kind of the game changer. This is what moves us more from just being this neat way of making compound textures into a bit more of a, a um, substance painter companion or a com replacement possibility. So now we're gonna here, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna add a new layer in here. So add a new surface layer and we're gonna call it, we're gonna search for I think rust. Yeah, we're gonna bring on a rust layer. So we got here, yeah, rusted sheet metal. That works for me. And what this is going to do, because it is the top layer, is it replaced everything. Now, obviously we don't wanna do that. So what I'm gonna do now is see on down here, we've got the ability to add a paint mask. You can also do that by right clicking, by the way. But what we wanna do is actually hold down Alt while we click this, and this will create a black paint mask, right? So, so basically nothing is showing now, and we've got our paint tool up here. Number of different paint brushes available, uh, eraser tool available as well, and what you can do is define your own brushes. You can actually load in your own brush shape. Um, click here, you bring it in as uh, an image file. So basically you've got your brushes defined, all the different settings, jittering, and so on. And what we can do now with one of these brushes defined, or we could create our we can create and save our own brushes. So let's go back up here, scroll up, grab kind of this soft brush right here. And then I'm gonna turn the opacity down. Yeah, higher flow, low opacity, come in here. So remember we're painting the uh, the, the mask here, uh, the uh, the visibility mask on this guy. So let's get go look at these guys right here. I'm just gonna add a little bit of rust to it. And that, my friends, is a game changing feature. So now what we can do is start building really complicated and complex shapes or uh, textures 
by painting these different layers and tools together, this is actually where you're starting to get into the same kind of functionality that this is the functionality that was missing all along anyway. So this is definitely a very cool to see feature. So you've got the ability to now do all your mix ins and so on. And I could also come up here and go, uh, we, we could, you know, still do all of the functionality we did before. So I could come in here, I can add a surface layer of, I don't know, leather. Let's go in here, find our fabrics. Let's get rid of our search criteria there. All right, what do we got for fabrics? All right, so here we got leather. So bring in a leather right here as an example. And let's make this like a hot pink. Yeah, there we go. So we got this nice leather going on. We can also control this guy once again using the standard mask stack. So we don't have to paint everything. We can come in here and we're gonna apply this guy as a checkerboard pattern there. So now we're adding purple leather in a checkerboard across our object. So you have the ability to make incredibly complicated textures very, very easily. But the real, real power of the new thing that's gone on here is that new painting layer. Uh, so that that's some pretty awesome stuff. Uh, there's, there's a lot of power in the ability to paint directly on the surface. You can really control. So here I'm just literally painting in a color. Uh, so um, yeah, yeah so we can set our paint up. So I can set what I'm going to paint with right here and then just basically start painting that surface on. Or as you saw earlier on with, with this channel right here, I just applied a smart surface to the entire channel and then started painting it out using masks. And we've also got the ability to control things via channel ID. Uh, so if your guy's set up, you can paint on, so you can have like the cockpit layer and apply just a material to that. So I gotta say with this new functionality, Quixel Mixer is so much closer to doing a lot of what um, you can now do in Substance Painter. And, and you know, it always kind of took it from a different approach as well, where this was more about composition. But now with this new painting functionality, it's gotten so much more capable. And I, I'm really interested to see where they go with it. And then again, you can't really ignore the fact that if you're using this guy for Unreal Engine, which is exactly why Epic Games bought Quixel, the ability to come in here and say, okay, I just need to paint with some metal and then search. And I'll go back here to the actual surface category. And then boom, I've got tons and tons and tons and tons of metals to work from. So let's say I like this guy. Let's go ahead, say, yep, yeah, give me that. And then boom, it is mine. Now this also leads to a number of different questions. Like how can I use this? And the basic answer is you can either get a mega scan subscription and then it doesn't really matter how the hell you use it. Or if you're using uh, Unreal Engine as your end product. So if you're ultimately going to be using Unreal Engine for uh, the majority of your work, then you can, uh, you, you can use this stuff anyway. So if you, for example, in the bridge example, I exported a model out to Blender and that's absolutely fine. So you can work in Blender because that model was ultimately going to be consumed in Unreal Engine. So it's all about what your end result is. So there we got our model in. I'm just gonna go ahead, we can drop one as a layer into here. And then boom, we now have this new layer hooked up. So I could come here, let's just get rid of everything else. And we'll delete those things out. There is our new layer in. Uh, we got control over how it is applied. We have it tiling, not tiling. We can set the offset on it. We can set the repetitions on it. And yeah, that's that's it. That That is Quixel Mixer 2020 in a nutshell. Again, I'm just scratching the surface. I'm still playing around with what's possible with it. But really, that new paint functionality, the new ability to bring in your own custom models to start painting, those were the two really missing features. And they've and of course it is all completely free. So you could bring in your own PBR textures, completely ignore the whole mega scans thing, organize your textures in bridge, uh, texture your models in here, never use Unreal Engine at all, and you still have a really powerful management and painting texture workflow between the two products, and they've made it all completely free. So that is pretty awesome. Anyways, that is Mixer 2020. Let me know what you think, comments down below, and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.